Hey guys, hope you are well. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the distributive property. Now, in the previous lessons, we've looked at the commutative and the associative property. But now it's the distributive. Now, this is quite an easy one. I always start with letters first, just to show you what the rule looks like. And then I'll show you with numbers. Okay, so the distributive property looks like this. So how would you identify the distributive property? Well, on the left side over here, you're gonna have brackets. Or on one of the sides, you're gonna have brackets. But then on this side, there's no brackets. So when you see that in a test, then you know that that is the distributive. Now, how does it work? Well, what they do is they take this A and they multiply it over there. They distribute it over there and they distribute it over there. So what is A? multiplied by b, or that'll be this one over here. And then what is a multiplied by c, or that'll be this one over here. But now, what does it actually mean? Well, what it means is the following. If you take, for example, the number five and three plus seven, okay? Now, what, what they are telling you is that if you wanted to, you can also, you could calculate this by rather saying um, five multiplied by three plus, and then five multiplied by seven. Let's see if it actually makes sense. So let's forget about this part over here for now, and let's see if we can calculate this part by just doing it like this. So what is three plus seven? Well, that is 10. And what is five times 10? 50. Now, let's see what we get if we do it this way. So what is 5 multiplied by 3? 15. What is 5 multiplied by 7? 35. What is 15 plus 35? 50. So what they are just telling us with the distributive property is that this can also be calculated like this. And it doesn't matter if we have a plus or a minus. It also works with minus. Let me show you. So if we use a minus, let's say, uh, let's rather say two, seven minus two, no, let's use a three, and then, okay, so we know that they said that that can be two multiplied by seven, now you'll just say minus two multiplied by three. And what would that give you? 14 take away six, which is eight. And if you had to just go calculate it over here, you would also get eight. So can you see that there are brackets on this side but then there's no brackets on this side. That is how you can identify the distributive property. So in this lesson, we looked at the distributive property and what we identified was that, let's say for example, you have five multiplied by eight plus three. Well, that is the same as five multiply by eight, so like that, and then plus five multiply three. Okay, another example would be three, six minus two, or that is the same as three multiply six, because it's there, and then minus three multiply two. So it works with plus and minus. And then the other thing I want you to remember is that if they ask you in a test if it's associative, commutative, or distributive property, the way that you can know it's distributive is when you have brackets on the one side, but there's no brackets on the other side.